You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Pastor Kathleen Panning. Kathleen Panning, who has been an ordained minister for over 35 years, brings her experience to your ministry, be it energizing your staff or working through conflicts with your faith community. So now, please welcome the host of A Flame Ministry, Pastor Kathleen Panning. Welcome. This is A Flame Ministry. We are here, as always, on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. I'm your host, Pastor Kathleen Panning. This is a show about ministry, and it's for those who are professionals in ministry, um, maybe pastor, priest, rabbi, imam, deacon, elder, uh, minister of music, youth minister, whatever your your title may be, uh, this show is for you. But it's also for those who are in leadership positions in your faith community. And so in that sense, it can be for just about anybody. Um, and we talk about a variety of topics here on the show. And if, depending on my guest, sometimes we talk about um, different faiths and bridging the any misunderstandings and uh, between faiths um, sometimes. But at other times, or probably the majority of the time, we talk about issues that are kind of common to all faiths because they're issues about us as people and about leadership. And my guest today is in that second category. She is Renee Kamstra. Renee is one of the world's top speakers and business coaches focusing on communication, leadership, personal development, corporate growth, and sales for entrepreneurs entrepreneurs and corporate executives. Uh, Renee consults with and trains a vast range of clients located in, get this, 28 countries. Uh, she worked closely with leaders like Tony Robbins, Chet Holmes, Sally Hogshead, and many more. And it's through her work with Sally Hogshead that I have met Renee Gee, it's been about seven or eight years ago. Uh, her prominent corporate clients include CoreLogic, Visa, Wells Fargo, Morgan State University. She has helped clients achieve phenomenal success. For example, one of her clients recently accepted a $1 million offer on Shark Tank. Uh, Renee is highly sought after as one of the top closers and sales trainers in the industry, personally closing over 450 million sales in dollars in sales. Um, business leaders from all over the world seek out Renee's unique insights into building a cohesive, effective, and committed team. Renee, it's delightful to get to talk with you again uh, after quite a number of years, and to have you here on the show. Thank you so much for inviting me, Kathleen, and I I can't wait to start on the topic. Yeah. Uh, we Like I said, we met through um, Sally Hogshead's work with How to Fascinate, and you were actually the one who trained me uh, years ago. And I think that our small little group that we were uh, I was part of – got the best training of all for um, the How to Fascinate material, and we delved into it a lot deeper than uh, I think they typically get today because of the length of time that we took doing that. So for anybody who's thinking about working with Renee, this is a short testimonial. I highly recommend it. She's really good. Um, But we're here to talk about Emotions, feelings, and leadership, and how that impacts faith communities. Um, Renee, 
what's emotions and feelings, you talk about them as two separate things. And yet, typically, I kind of think of them as synonymous. uh, And I think most people do too. So how do you differentiate between those? Okay, that's exactly, I'm so happy you asked that question. Because if you actually, let's say we're going to look at a movie, all right? Mm-hmm. When we look at a scary movie and you are seeing somebody that's coming from the back of maybe a woman with a knife, there is an emotion that play, it takes place that is totally instinctive. It's mm-hmm. not because we wanted to have a certain feeling in that movie. It is an instinctive thing. So emotions is mostly coming from our brain and it will try to anticipate or, uh, you know, uh, uh, if we watch that movie, it could be a random event that actually creates the emotion. So what I want you to know is that an emotion is instinctive and anticipation, whereas a feeling is the brain's interpretation of it. Ah. It is the mental portrayal of the emotion. And because of that, we can choose to change a feeling. We cannot choose to change an emotion because it just happens. Can you give us an example? You know, say I, um, the one that you used, the, a scary situation where yep. instinctively there's fear coming. How does a feeling, how could we change that feeling? Well, think a little bit about it. If you want to be a leader, right? But Mm -hmm. you just had a big fight with your wife or your husband or uh, whoever that morning, right? Mm -hmm. You can then choose to either stay in that stage of rage or you can choose to say, well, I need to show up as my best self. So if I want to be my best self, How do I have to show up? What maybe words can I use to show up? So let me give you an example of words. Mm -hmm. If If you're going to speak to your congregation and you are really angry inside, right? You might choose, I want to show up as loving. I want to show up as being kind. I want to show up vulnerable. I want to show up strong, whatever that would be. When you choose those words, as I say them to you, Kathleen, can you actually feel a change in your body? Yeah, it it, it shifts from um, poten- it relaxed me, as you said those words. Exactly, right? Because mm-hmm. you are now choosing something of how you want to show up. And Mm -hmm. as you choose that, and you really mean it, that's now how you can show up so different to your audience. And so, so, let me give you another example. Yeah, okay. If if I'm a singer on Broadway, right, and Mm -hmm. I just had a very, very sad event happen. Let's say somebody who's very near to me just passed away. And I go on that stage. I have to choose what feeling can I use to still show up and sing tonight. Mm -hmm. I have to differentiate. It's almost like changing the messenger from the message. Yeah. Does that make sense? Because the show goes on. Yeah. Uh, 
it, it makes sense to me and that there's a few more things that we need to unpack with that, but we have to take our first break. So this is the BBM Global Network and Tune in Radio. I am Pastor Kathleen, your host for A Flame Ministry. Please stay tuned because we've got a lot more with Renee. We're coming right back. Dr. R.C. will share extraordinary resources and services that promote educational success as well as making a difference in the lives of all social workers as well as the lives of children, adolescents, and teens of today. She will have open discussions addressing many of the issues that we face about our youth and how being employed in the uniquely skilled profession of social work for over 18 years has taught invaluable lessons through her personal experiences. She will also provide real-life facts, examples, and personal stories that will confirm that why serving as a child advocate is extremely beneficial when addressing the needs of the whole child. Listen live Saturdays, 10 a.m. Eastern on the BBM Global Network and to Tune in radio as Dr. R.C. will provide thought-provoking information that will empower, encourage, and strengthen students, families, and communities across our nation. You can also visit her at soarwithkatie.com. According to the American Nurses Association, there are approximately three and a half to four million nurses in the United States. So where do all these nurses work? What kind of roles do they have? What kind of education and training help to prepare them for so many different settings? What kind of impact do nurses have on patient outcomes? The World Health Organization has announced that 2020 will be the year of the nurse, honoring the 200th birth anniversary of Florence Nightingale, an international initiative called Nurse now is underway to raise the profile of nursing. The National Academy of Medicine has convened a committee to create the future of nursing 2020 to 2030 that will focus on how the nursing profession can create a culture of health, reduce health disparities, and improve the health and well-being of the U.S. population. Learn more and join Joyce Batchelor on All About Nursing Wednesdays from 7 to 8 p.m. Central Standard Time on the BBM Global Network. Well, Welcome back. This is Flame Ministry. Um, I am your host, Pastor Kathleen Panning. We are here on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. And my guest today is Renee Kamstra. She is one of the world's top speakers and business coaches and focuses uh, her work on communication, leadership, personal development, corporate growth, uh, sales for entrepreneurs and corporate executives and we're talking today about the the communication leadership aspect of this for for faith leaders and before the break Renee you were talking about words and the power that words have to interpret our emotions um, and you defined emotions as the instinctive, reactions in our brain and feelings as the interpretation we give to that. And as I was thinking about that, it's like the words, can the words that we use in the sense generate uh, an emotion or do they uh, help us just kind of reframe the emotion that exists or maybe both? I would say probably both in a way. So, so what happens is um, if, if we get an emotion because we step into a situation that we are not happy with, right? Mm-hmm. We can, let me say it this way, we can lose our cool. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. and why? <laughs> because um, we actually give any situation a meaning but it doesn't mean it, it's meaning the same thing for everybody. Think about it. You know, um, I might be in a really good mood walking into a situation and hearing something where somebody else hears the exact same thing, but because they didn't feel great that morning, they will interpret it totally different. Right. Which is very interesting. So so we can look at the same situation, give it a total different meaning, and therefore um, we have a different reaction to it, mm. which is also very interesting. Yeah. Right? Uh, and so, yep. I, I was thinking one of my um, mentors years ago said that we're never too old to have a happy childhood, which is basically 
that idea that we can even look back at a situation that we were in where we had emotions and feelings and reinterpret them to something totally. more positive more positive which is basically what you're talking about absolutely and there's another very big distinction and the one is what most people don't realize is that we have internal emotions and feelings and external emotions and feelings that is coming out through words so okay. i want to really make that distinction because internally especially for leaders it is important to give ourselves good internal words because most of what we think about in the day we are not even aware of right we have so many thoughts a day that we have no idea that we are thinking them and if those thoughts are well i don't like my group or um i am just not good enough to lead this or um you know i shouldn't have fear and yet i do you know people think those type of thoughts versus you know um let me choose to just move forward and really trust god there's a difference mm-hmm. a big right? difference yeah <laughs> if we have those internal thoughts that's how we show up outside to the world so we will be a weak leader and not because we want to be one Uh, so we will have to show up almost stronger but that strength doesn't come internally it just comes up through words and words to the external listener can people can see if you are showing up just to be mean and to try and look strong versus being a kind leader with strength Yeah so people will what you're saying is people sense and know when it's kind of an external facade that we're putting up trying to be something that's not matching internally with what's going on Absolutely and the reason for that is body language and the other reason is um you know the way we say it Have you ever heard a mother who maybe was angry at her child and then she will or, or you know somebody who was in a love relationship but when they are angry they will say but well, i love you <laughs> <laughs> right yeah. it just doesn't match what it's supposed to be and that's where the interpretation of the feeling comes in mm-hmm. yeah so to to go from that internal anger to saying i love you and having the word match the feeling or bring forth the feeling it sounds like we have to be much more conscious of the words we use and deliberately mm. choose the feeling to match the words would that be right yeah. that's totally right wow i'm so happy you got it uh, kathleen because it is it is so important if we decide even before we go into a meeting how we want to show up everything changes mm-hmm. it is yeah. if you can match that feeling then with words um of gratitude or um you know like martin luther king who was talking about the dream right mm-hmm. it totally brings a whole different flavor and people will hang on your lips you will become a lot more influential yeah so it's the consciousness um uh, being aware of the internal talk that we're giving ourselves and having that match the external words to have them lined up um which gives us as leaders greater strength and greater credibility and influence is that accurate absolutely that's so accurate yes and therefore you want to look you know what emotions would really work best and we all know gratitude uh 
joy, passion, you know, and you receive from where you are. And maybe that's where we need to pick up in yeah, a few seconds. Please. Yeah, because you mentioned the word gratitude. That's one of my favorite things. So uh, we do have to take a break, and we will pick up with that when we come back. This is a flame ministry. We are here on the BBM Global Network and tuned in radio. Stay tuned because we are coming right back. What if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair? What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick. Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to Easy sense.com and learn how with your help we can fight these horrific brain disorders that's easysense.com to learn more and help support the broderick foundation Mike Zorick, a three-time California state champion in Greco-Roman wrestling at 114 pounds. Mike, blind since birth, was born in Hartford, Connecticut. He was a six-time national placer, including two seconds, two-thirds, and two-fourths. He also won the Veterans Folk Style Wrestling twice at 152 pounds. In all these tournaments, he was the only blind competitor. Nancy Zorick, a creative spirit whose talents have taken her to the stage and into galleries and exhibitions in several states. Her father, a commercial artist who shared his instruments with his daughter and helped her fine-tune her natural abilities, influenced her decision to follow in his footsteps. Ms. Zorick has enjoyed a fruitful career doing what she loves. Listen Saturday mornings at 12 Eastern for The Nancy and Mike Show for heartwarming stories and interesting talk on the BBM Global Network. Welcome back. We are on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. I'm Pastor Kathleen Panning, your host for Aflame Ministry. My guest today is Renee Kemstra. She is um, a world-known speaker and business coach working with people on communication, leadership, personal development, uh, as well as other things. And um, she works with clients in 28 countries and has worked with Tony Robbins, uh, Chet Holmes, Sally Hogshead, and others. And Renee, it's just delightful to have you here for one. But before the break, we were talking, you mentioned the power of uh, feelings like gratitude and joy and happiness. And one of the things that anybody who's listened to the show for a while might remember is that I close the show each day, each time with asking people to find a minimum of three things that they're grateful for and how powerful gratitude can be. And I'm thinking, especially in our current situation with uh, the COVID virus and the, the restrictions and the changes and uncertainty that's brought to the whole world, um, what does that gratitude do to us, our brains, to our um, our leadership, uh, if you will? I love that question. So I want to actually put my word of leadership a little bit in perspective here as well, because <laughs> In these times, leadership is not just if you have a big congregation. I think right now, especially with everybody that has to be at home all the time, leadership has to be you have to lead yourself in order to choose how you're going to show up. You've Mm -hmm. got to be a leader to your family. And then obviously it goes outside to others. And so let's say, we are the leadership in our marriage or with our children, and right now it doesn't go too well. Well, an exercise that you can do is, just like you were saying, write three things of gratitude, make it 
specific, person specific. So if you are not having a good relationship with your spouse right now, create a page where every single day you choose and look at three things that you like about them, that you feel gratitude why they are in your life. And if you would do that for a few weeks, what it does to your brain is, one, it it takes you to a place where you have no choice, but you have to think, okay, what is it that I appreciate about this person? Mm. What did I see today that made them special? How did they show up where I maybe didn't show up that way? So it takes your focus to a place where it is in a positive state. Yeah. And, and I think that's where every, everything starts. When we are not happy, um, our focus is in a place where we cannot make a difference. And by being in gratitude, your focus is totally in a place of bliss or where you can be, um, you know, coming from a much better space. But what I've also learned is it is not possible. I don't care what good or how good you are in faith to go from a place of anger to gratitude in one sitting. It's Mm -hmm. not possible. And so if you are in a place where you feel angry or sad or depressed, All you need to do is start looking for the next best feeling you can get. You know, so I'm going to be very bold and say, if you are sad, your next best feeling could be angry. And if Mm -hmm. you are angry, it's going to take you out of sadness and depression. Because remember, depression puts you in a place where you are totally stuck and you cannot do anything. Yeah. Whereas when you're angry, at least it brings adrenaline to your brain and now you want to do something. And once you are at an angry feeling, the next best feeling could be, you know what, Um, maybe I need to look for forgiveness or maybe I can just for myself feel grateful that I actually notice that I'm now angry and I can do something about that. I can choose a different feeling. Yeah. So I just kind of want to bring that up because it's really important that uh, people don't get hard on themselves because they cannot go directly from anger or depression to a place of gratitude. So just look for the next best feeling and how do you, how will you find it? You will really feel a little bit of relief. Mm. Yeah, and it, oh, there's s- several things that you're talking about here. Is it, one is that we, we, when we look for something, we find it. Uh, so when we look for things to appreciate about somebody else, we'll find them. When we look for things to appreciate about ourselves, we can find that. Um, you know. It, if, especially if we're not in depression, it's severe depression. But um, but you know, sometimes it takes really intentionally looking for that. Um, Absolutely. And that, so it's asking yeah. ourselves a different question because mm-hmm. we have to realize, and this is so important, Kathleen, emotions have more power than intellect mm-hmm. because we will always justify an emotion. Doesn't yeah. mean it's always right. In fact, it's mostly not right. Well, and those emotions are, they're chemistry in our brain. And and so when we change the words and, you know, say, I'm going to change my feelings, we're literally changing the way we think, uh, changing the chemistry the brain chemistry that's going on in there. And um, so, yes, we can change our mind, literally change our minds by the words we use and the, what, what we're feeling. And that's why when we look for things to be grateful for or that are not as bad as or, you know, something that changes our perspective on things, 
it, it has a physical effect on us um, and everything. So there's, there's a lot more to talk about with this, uh, but we have to take another break. So this is the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. I'm your host, Pastor Kathleen Panning. We are doing a flame ministry, and Renee and I will be right back. Stay tuned. Master of words, powerful player. What life-changing words can Dr. Janet Smith-Warfield pull out of her magical toolbox that just might mysteriously open a door you never knew was there? A door to free yourself from fear forever. Transform your rage into right action. Release your guilt. Position you into a life of freedom, purpose, passion, power, and peace. All quite suddenly, unexpectedly, and almost miraculously, with no effort on your part. Join Dr. Janet every Monday at noon Eastern on Dancing with Words, Dancing with Wisdom on the BBM Global Network as she and her guests show you how words map our experiences, immersing you in a sound bath that relaxes your muscles, opens your mind, and supports you in co-creating your extraordinary life. Tune into It's All About You with host Dr. Martha Latz, a lively weekly broadcast on BBM Global Network, one of the most empowering shows for time-starved, overscheduled multitaskers. The professional expertise of Dr. Latz is directly available live every Thursday at 1 p.m. to answer and address concerns about relationships, life transitions of career, meeting, dating, and committed relationships. It's All About You with Dr. Latz will expand your understanding of current and concerns across your relationships by broadening and expanding possible solutions in developing skills for mutually desired outcomes. Dr. Martha's expertise is as a licensed marriage and family therapist, life, transition coach, and all things to do with communication at work, home, and with friends. Check out her website at auniquetherapycenter.com. Welcome back. This is um, a flame ministry. We are here on TuneIn Radio and the BBM Global Network. I am your host, Pastor Kathleen Panning. My guest is Renee Kamstra. She uh, consults with um, and coaches um, business leaders and leaders in corporations uh, in 28 countries uh, as a speaker and works with um, the likes of Tony Robbins, Sally Hogshead, Chet Holmes, and many others, and talks, deals with communication and leadership, uh, personal development, corporate growth, and, and more. And before the break, Rade, we're talking about the power of our words and things that literally change our minds. And I've heard that if you smile, you cannot be angry at the same time. Say something. Is that true? And say something about that. It is absolutely true. And so maybe it would be a great idea for your listeners to actually go and sit almost like in a ball with shoulders down and looking down and uh, no smile on your face. So you can just feel the feeling, right? I mean, we've all seen people who were slugged over and you know that they are not feeling at their very best. Mm -hmm. Now, do the opposite. Sit up really straight or stand up straight and put a big smile on your face and try and do that with the same sad emotion. It's mm -hmm. impossible. It literally is impossible. It's like endorphins gets released in your mind when you actually smile. That's why, yeah. I don't know if you notice, but if I smile while I talk to you versus I'm talking like this without a smile, you can even mm. hear it in my voice tone. Mm. Yeah. Isn't it interesting? And yeah. It, they, it immediately brings a different type of excitement to the table. And so it's just it's a great way to, to understand when you don't feel well and your feelings are down and you have a lot of emotions, what you can do as an exercise is get up, 
do a few exercises, maybe do a few jumping jacks, right? So that the cerebral mm -hmm. fluid can flow and be very deliberate to put a smile on your face and to focus on something that is good in your life. No matter what it is, maybe you love your bed. Maybe, um, you know, you just had a wonderful ice cream. I don't care what it is. But if you mm -hmm. focus very deliberately on something good, your feelings will change and your smile will absolutely have the internal feelings change as well and you will feel better. So if I may, Kathleen, I want to give you an example of what happened Please. with me on one of my trips. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I, wa I had to do a 11-month world tour. And wow. so... Um, I was about in month four and a half, and I was in Thailand, which was just beautiful. But one morning I woke up, and my human side came out. I woke up, and I felt incredibly lonely and alone. And so my mm. first thought was, you know what? I'm just going to buy a ticket and come back to America. But the next week I had to talk in Fiji. All right. Mm. And I was crying and I was just a mess. Now, as a coach, one of the things that I coach my clients is the following. When you are in a state of such emotion, you never make a decision because mm. your decision will be based on these emotions, which is never correct. Okay. And mm -hmm. so... What I did in that moment is I set my alarm for 30 minutes and I gave myself permission to cry and sulk for 30 minutes mm. because it's a real emotion. I yeah. really felt it. So I sure. needed to get that out. And so once that alarm went off, I made the decision that I would go to my favorite breakfast place. So the um, alarm went off. I was still crying like crazy. I did mm -hmm. not allow myself to buy a ticket back to America. I put on my clothes and went to this little restaurant where there was these little lady boys. <laughs> mm. I call them lady boys because, yeah, they, they were like lady boys, right? They did mm. not know how to handle me, Kathleen, but mm. they took my order and I actually ordered an omelet and I sat mm. outside in the garden. That's when mm -hmm. the miracle happened. I sat next to a plant and the next moment a butterfly landed on the plant right next to me. Wow. Okay. And I looked at the butterfly. I took a photo. So I have photos of all of this. If, mm -hmm. if your listeners ever want to go to my Facebook, they will see this. So, the butterfly landed there. When my food came, the butterfly flew into my plate. Mm. It sat on the rim watching outside. I took a photo. It turned towards my um, egg. I took a photo. Then it mm. went and it sat in the middle of my omelet and spread oh. its wings. And oh I was just mesmerized, right? And so I'm looking at this. I took a photo, obviously. And then my mm -hmm. first thought was, am I going to eat this? And then I'm like, sure, I'm going to eat this. It's just little legs. And then it looked like it was sucking nectar. Mm -hmm. And I knew that's not possible because it was a salty omelet. Mm -hmm. But what happened in that moment is I knew with certainty God is with me. I am never alone. Mm -hmm. And the other thing was, I took all these photos, put it on Facebook, and asked my friends, what do they think the message is for me? So I told uh -huh. them I felt this feeling, right? Mm -hmm. Within an hour, I had 169 messages from all oh over the world. Wow. And so not only did God... You know, made, um, I just knew he was there, right? He's everywhere and, and, and everything changed for me. But I also saw it physically happen. So yeah. internally, I had to have the internal experience. 
I had the external verbiage that I gave to others and that then came back to me. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think that's really important to understand. Yeah. And then you had 169 friends. You're never alone uh, from around the world there. So we have to take another break. Um, Beautiful story. This is a flame ministry. We are here on the BBM Global Network and tune in radio. Renee and I will be right back. Stay tuned. Author, radio show host, and coach, John M. Hawkins, reveals strategies to help gain perspective, build confidence, find clarity, achieve goals. John M. Hawkins' new book, Coached to Greatness, Unlock Your Full Potential with Limitless Growth. Published by iUniverse, Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them, rediscover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and to Tune in radio. Have you ever wondered why some children recover from their symptoms of autism while others never seem to get any better? After 13 years of research, Karen Thomas has recovered her own son from his symptoms of autism naturally. She now shares how she did it with you in her free webinar so that you can have the right resources and knowledge to help your child. The definition of recovery is to regain health. Karen offers this to you in four stages. Healing the gut, natural heavy metal detoxification, balancing the co-infections of autism, brain support, and repair. Register now for this free webinar to help you know what you can do to help your child to sleep better, be more calm, improve focus, and reach their fullest potential to live a happy, healthy life. Go to naturallyrecoveringautism.com forward slash free workshop empowering parents with the resources to naturally recover autism from a mom who's done it welcome back this is a flame ministry i'm your host pastor kathleen panning my guest today is renee kemstra she is a um, world-known speaker business coach um, focuses on communication leadership personal development uh, corporate growth um, sales And Renee is here, Renee and I met uh, about eight years ago, seven or eight years ago with the work from Sally Hogshead, but we're talking about our emotions and feelings that they're not exactly the same thing and how that impacts leadership. And before the break, Renee, you gave a beautiful story uh, from your own life about um, changing the meaning of how you were feeling and what was going on in your life. And it reminds me of the book, A Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl, uh, an Austrian-born psychiatrist who was imprisoned during uh, World War II in some of Hitler's infamous uh, prison camps uh, and uh, survived the, the Holocaust. Um, and his understanding that you know people can be physically imprisoned, but we always have the choice to create meaning, even in the midst of horrible things. And we can change that meaning. We can find meaning. How does that relate to our emotions and feelings and being in a position of leadership? for ourselves and for others in faith communities right now? It is, this is the 100% loaded question, right? (laughs) Um, Because again, an emotion just happens. So imagine when you are in those camps and you are starving literally and you were working these unbelievably hard jobs and won't get money and so on. You could stay in that place and that wouldn't help you to survive. 
Yeah. However, if you, so, so this is the whole thing to remember. When you stay in that space, by just clinging to the emotion that you have, pretty much what that also means is you stay in your own ego. Mm. Ooh. Think about that. Mm -hmm. Because it's all about you. So for us to change that to a feeling of how do we want to show up as a leader would take for us to take the focus out of ourselves and put it to who we want to show up as, as a leader, in order to show up for others. So mm -hmm. we go from ego to serving. Big switch, major, and important I think switch. Yeah. It's a major switch. And, and, and it's very hard for many people because if we sit in our own anger or whatever, that's what starts war. Yeah. Right. It could. It, it, it. That's that's where all these horrible things comes from. Whereas if we go from just us to others, they can be romance. That's what creates um, babies, right? Mm -hmm. Because literally we switch from ego to love. Yeah. And, and it, then we choose. Excuse me? Well, I was going to say, when we're in that ego space, it, we basically imprison ourselves in a very small world. It's just about us. So but when we, when we go to the others, the world opens up with possibilities. So true. And who is a real leader? Is a real leader a dictator, like Hitler was? Or the real leader, somebody who brings out the best in others. But you cannot bring out the best in others if you don't show up as your best self. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if for that to happen, what would be some questions, if you would, for, for us to ask ourselves? Um, ways to think about this, as, you know, how to be a better us as leaders in this day and age? So we can, uh, we can ask ourselves, so uh, what are three words that could describe the best me so that I can apply these words moving forward, right? So mm -hmm. um, if, if I am now somebody who is, uh, not such a kind person, you know, maybe I want to be kinder. So what are three words that could describe the best me? Um, how do I want to treat others? Because if you show up in a way that you really want to treat others, then you're going to show up different. So let me give you an example. Maybe mm -hmm. you are in a relationship and is it, is it more important to you to win an argument or is it more imp important to you to be loved? Because you will be different in an argument if you choose to be loved and to keep the love. And it, I think it's important to point out that being loved in that sense doesn't necessarily mean capitulating yourself in an argument and you know, kind of giving in to everything. Um, but it's Correct. that, yeah, so people don't think, you know, that, that that means I have to give in and give up me in the process. Very true. And there's a fantastic exercise. Kathleen, if, you're, if, if the listeners can just take out a piece of paper, and maybe you can do the same, and draw four lines for me. Mm -hmm. Any now, four lines? Tell me, any four lines. Tell me what you see. I see a grid. Okay. Three, what else? Three, horiz three horizontal and one vertical line. Okay. What else? Um, what else? Um, I see 
kind of um, could be a ladder, uh, could be uh, shelves, it could be um, uh, various opportunities that could plug into those spaces. Um, so there's lines, there's spaces, there's ways of thinking about how to put that together and what it can do. Okay, so you alone draw, drew four lines and you saw at least five different things or possibilities in those four lines. Mm -hmm. And so what I want people to realize is no matter what you fight about or what you have an argument about, it is always the interpretation you give it. Yeah, and it, that's really important so, for us to remember. Correct. And we have the possibility to choose that interpretation. So we have to That's take another it. break. Yeah, we have to take another break. This is the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. You're listening to A Flame Ministry. I'm Pastor Kathleen Panning, your host, and Renee and I will be right back. If you seek a courageous advocate, prepare to champion your rights with consumer service agencies that support aging populations. Carol Ann Hamilton is the one for you. Carol Ann is an elder care coach, author, and speaker with a quarter million hours lived experience successfully supporting unculpable aging parents. As a result of a challenging journey, Carol Ann revolutionizes how stressed out caregivers restore serenity to their worlds. She also brings over 25 years of change management expertise in Fortune 500 settings to catalyze urgent transformation within the elder care industry. Carol Ann is a popular speaker at conferences across North America. She has appeared via TV, radio, and print globally. Now you can tune in weekly to get a dose of her inspiration plus down-to-earth advice to cope with even the most difficult aging parents. Listen Wednesdays at 9 a.m. Eastern on Bold Brave Media and Tune In Radio. We are back. I am Pastor Kathleen Panning, your host for A Flame Ministry here on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. And my guest today is Renee Kamstra. She is one of the world's top speakers and business coaches working with clients in 28 countries uh, on a vast range of things. Uh, Renee, we've been talking about emotions, which are the instinctive reactions and feelings, which are the interpretations, and how that all affects leadership and word just about out of time. <laughs> so, so much more we could share here. Uh, is there one way to kind of wrap this all up as a nugget for people? And please help people know how they can get in touch with you too. So, as we saw in the, uh, in the end with this little game that we played with the four lines, we can give different meanings to everything. And I think it's really important to realize that when we have a feeling, we give it a meaning, and then out of the meaning comes the reaction. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it is also important to realize that People come from a different space. I might wake up early in the morning today happy and somebody else might wake up sad. And all of us are going to come from the place where we are and interpret from that space. And so it is important for us to focus on how do we want to show up so that we can choose the feeling and then live our best selves. Um, so yeah. I really appreciate it. I love being on your show. And if anybody wants to see a little bit more of me, obviously I have Facebook. It's Renee Kamstra and it's Renee, R-E-N-E, -E, just one E, and then K-A, Emerson Mary, S-T-R-A. And that is on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, um, obviously I have a website, a dot .com, I have a dot .net. So I am so looking forward to uh, hearing more of everybody. And I have a free ebook that you can download uh -huh. from my website. Fantastic. Um, so and that will be absolutely one. Give people the, the name of your ebook. 
Oh, I don't have the because I have like three or four on my ah. website, so they can literally okay. choose. But about one oh. of them is, you know, how how words can actually, or actually how listening can make you millions and create better relationships. Oh, I listening love that is a topic. Key to everything. Yeah. Mm. Oh, we could do a whole show on that. <laughs> so maybe you'll have to come back. I'd love and do that. to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, Renee, thank you. It's been delightful to reconnect with you again after these years, because um, Renee was my teacher for the How to Fascinate material. Um, and How to Fascinate is one tool that can help us understand how we show up as our best selves and give language for some of that as well. Um, so it, it's delightful to be here with you, Renee. And like I do close every show, I encourage everybody to think of three things every single day that you can appreciate, that you're grateful for. Um, you know, at least start that process uh, or keep a gratitude journal, some way of helping us see the world around us and the people around us with greater gratitude and happiness. So um, I know the power of that in my own life as having kept a gratitude journal. And I do now on Facebook, hopefully every day, uh, a little gratitude time. So and you can find me on Facebook at Kathleen.Panning uh, and also on um, my website, which is aflameministryconsulting.com. Uh, there's my, um, also on Facebook with aflameministryconsulting.com. So, uh, and it's A-F-L-A-M-E, as in on fire. And so, and the other thing, in addition to the three gratitudes, um, find one way to try and make, something a little bit better for someone else to show a little bit of God's love to someone. So blessings to each of you, blessings to you, Renee and Perry for all of the week to come until we meet again. So take care. This has been a flame ministry with your host, pastor Kathleen Panning tune in each week as Kathleen guides you through the many challenges that face our faith-based communities today as she ignites the ministry of your faith community so that more people can hear the message of God's love on Kathleen Panning's A Flame Ministry. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.